it going there, everybody? This is Samuel Fisher from Green Dispensary Marketing, back again with another guest. Uh, this is Micah Hogan from FloraWorks. Uh, he is the VP of Sales and Marketing, um, and they run these. Uh, they sell these products, uh, these CBN, CBD products, um, and they offer a very unique uh, product to the marketplace. And so I'm really excited to talk with Micah, uh, learn more about him, what he does, as well as FloraWorks. How are you doing today, Micah? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah. So you are the VP of sales and marketing at FloraWorks. Can you tell me a little bit more how you got into that position in your background? Yeah, for sure. So uh, FloraWorks uh, launched in 2020 as a CBN manufacturer. This is before CBN really hit the market much. There was a little bit in California. Um, so we had a, a, a scientist, a chemist who had done some work around um degradation and oxidation of cannabinoids. And based on his research, uh, we decided that CBN was a viable play uh, for launching commercial scale. Um, so uh, Floorworks was kind of the first company to do that. Um, previously, I had run a cannabis uh, wholesale distribution company out of Oregon and Southern Oregon. Um, and then even before that, uh, it, worked for as a sales director for the first uh, recreational extraction facility in Oregon as well. That was called Swell Provisions, um, also known as DAB Society, uh, BHO, hydrocarbon. Um, and, uh, you know, been a, been a long time enthusiast of cannabis, grew up in Southern Oregon and uh, in the Emerald Triangle there. So uh, it was, you know, just kind of a way of life down there. Yeah, so you've been around the block then. So you've you've been in the cannabis industry how many years now? Uh, I mean, like officially ten, I guess. You know, and officially a few more. Yeah, congrats on making it this far. Um, I think you picked the right career path personally. So the cannabis industry is projected to reach about seventy three point six billion by twenty twenty seven. So if, if all of us are just getting a tiny, tiny, tiny little slither of that, we'll be okay. You know. Um, and I'm interested to learn more about FloraWorks, um, and specifically why you focus on CBN. As I was looking at your website, it seems to be one of your main product offerings is CBN. You want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So we saw CBN being a better CBD um, for all intents and purposes. Uh, you know, CBD had already been filed as a drug by Epidiolex. Um, so we knew as a, as a company that there was no way to get a, a like an NDI filing, a uh, new dietary ingredient filing on something like CBD. Um, and CBN uh, also had a little higher barrier to entry. Um, it's not enzymatically produced by the plant. It's only produced through uh, degradation and oxidation of THC. So it takes a little bit more chemistry, a little bit more know-how than just extracting CBD or CBG uh, directly from a plant. Um, so uh, th those are a couple of reasons as a, as a business model, it made a lot of sense. Um, plus the, the, the molecule itself, CBN, is, is very, very similar to THC, just missing that, that uh, five chain on the end. I think that's what it's called. I'm not a chemist. I'm a salesperson. I failed the chemist. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> I'll take my word on the chemistry part of it. Uh, but um, the, the, the potential there on, and the, the therapeutic benefits we saw were very good because it does um, hit that CB1 receptor. Um, it's, it's mostly non-psychoactive. It has a little bit of psychoactivity at very, very high doses. Um, huh. But you get a lot of the same benefits of THC without the high, which is what CBD wanted to be, but it, it, you know, CBD does not hit that CB1 receptor. So um, we, we see it just being a little... A little more potent. That's interesting. And so this is one of those uh, products that's legal uh, through the farm bill. Would that be correct? Yeah, that's correct. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. Also, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry for cutting you off. Oh, it's all it's all hemp derived. Awesome. Yeah. And so I was looking at your website. And it looks like uh, one of the main uh, selling points for your product, True CBN, is that it helps with sleep. And so you know, thirty percent of adults in the USA suffer from some sort of sleep disorder, whether it be insomnia. And so would you say that that's a big reason why you jumped into the industry to just kind of help with sleep without providing an alternative to, you know, sleep pills that you can get addicted to, cause problems with? 
Yeah. So, you know, I think like all, all cannabis uh, enthusiasts out there, you know, we want cannabis, the benefits of cannabis to uh, displace and disrupt some uh, the pharmaceutical offerings out there um, and, and provide a better alternative. So we're definitely on that path. Uh, you know, CBN, there's still a lot to be researched about it. Um, and we have done the first double blinded uh, controlled placebo study uh, for cannabinoid for sleep. And uh, it just got peer reviewed, published in the Journal of uh, Pharmaceuticals. Funny is the name of the name of the, uh, the journal is the Journal of Pharmaceuticals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's showing a lot of promise for sleep. And uh, we actually, True CBN is our trademarked uh, product now, um, uh, coming out of those the, that sleep study, um, which was over a thousand thousand person cohort. So we we had a large group of participants, um, and we even uh, measured it against melatonin, against four milligrams of melatonin, and our fifty milligram dose uh, slightly outperformed uh, melatonin in that in that study. So, so we really think that uh, that CBN and True CBN in particular uh, will kind of be that that disruptor in the sleep aid space. Uh, melatonin is a synthesized hormone. You know, it's naturally produced in our bodies. Um, I, I, for one, it personally, I, I don't like taking uh, synthetic hormones or things that my body naturally produces. That's fair. Uh, because I think that disrupts um, that natural. Uh, rhythm. So CBN uh, has, has worked great. I got two young kids. I have uh, had a lot of sleep disturbances over the last four or five years and, and CBN has been a game changer for me. That's awesome. Congrats. So I imagine that you're also using it. And it also works for you, correct? Yeah. 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 Definitely. I would say all of us company use it. Yeah. You practice but, um, and preach. <laughs> <laughs> So, but we are a, we're a wholesaler of, of the raw ingredients. So we sell minor cannabinoids. We sell CBN, uh, THCV, CBC, CBG. Um, so we really fuel a lot of the uh, products that you see on the dispensary shelves. Interesting. Is that something I actually wanted to ask about? Uh, I was leading into that. I had a, a question I wanted to ask before. But let's, let's jump into that. So I wanted to ask about what your wholesale offering is for dispensary owners or people who have the local CBD shops, for example. What it looks like, how do they get in contact with you, um, what kind of discount maybe, um, and what kind of benefits you can provide to them? So we're not so much for dispensary owners, but um, a lot of the products that are on the shelves, you know, the, the wild, the groon, um, those types of, of gummy products, uh, you'll often see our, our inputs um, in those products. Um, so we don't uh, directly work with dispensaries unless they have their own manufacturing. A lot of a lot of vertically integrated MSOs uh, are customers of ours as well. So um, on that level, we work with them. But we we try and we'll provide a lot of value to those brands and provide a lot of education on you know in, in scientific backing on what these minor cannabinoids do, and therefore they the the brands can then educate the bud tenders to speak uh, about the product benefits in a, a, I'd say, more eloquent and sophisticated manner. Yeah, that's fair. So you're mentioning wholesale. So how does that typically work? Uh, who do you typically work with? Like the MSOs you're saying? Uh, yeah, so CPG brands, so consumer packaged good brands. Got you. Awesome. And so let's jump, let's take two steps back real quick. I'm interested to learn a little bit more about the product. And so you're mentioning how it can give you a kind of little bit of a high, but not really. Um, and it also helps with sleep. Uh, what other benefits have you guys noticed that maybe have been studied and confirmed? So nothing has been confirmed yet in, in clinical trials, um, but uh, besides sleep. Yeah, and just to clarify, you know, that we, we ran uh, the, the sleep study, we ran a hundred milligram arm, uh, 50 milligram and 25 milligram arm on our study. So there was about uh, 250 people participating in the study who took hundred milligrams of CBN a day. And uh, there was no reported uh, negative side effects or, or psychotropic effects. Interesting. So, so, you know, when I say it hits that CB1 receptor and, and could cause a psychoactive effect, you'd have to take like a, a lot of CBN, you know, an unrecommended dose. Um, 
And I don't even know what that threshold is, but I think the, the point being is it's, it's non psychoactive, you know, even at a hundred milligrams, which is a, this is a huge, that's dose. a lot. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, the, but the, some of the other, uh, studies that are out there, there's an Institute called the Salk Institute that's done, um, some mouse trials on, uh, CBN and uh, it's neuroprotectin effects. So looking at, um, at, at neuroregenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, dementia. Um, so, so we're seeing some promising preclinical data on that, but nothing we can, nothing we can claim at this point. Well, I, I appreciate your honesty there. Um, and that, going back a little bit, you were also mentioning how you run education, educative campaigns. Uh, what do those typically look like? Uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it's backing it with science. So, um, you know, disseminating our sleep study, for instance, um, and delivering that to our customers so that they've got some data to back up the product. So our true CBN product, um, now comes with substantiated marketing claims. So, you know, you've seen all the CBD claims out there. Uh, unfortunately, none of them have really truly been substantiated through a double blind placebo study. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, they, they can't go through those studies because of the drug filing of Epidiolex. So some regulatory issues there. Um, but uh, our true CBN product, uh, customers that are using true CBN, such as, as Groon is a, is a large uh, gummy, uh, and, well, edible uh, company, um, gummies and chocolates. And uh, they have a true CBN product that just launched in May. Um, and so they can, they can say it helps improve sleep. Um, so that is, a, that is a new marketing claim that uh, is actually validated by science. So this is kind of a, this is a new, uh, new dimension for cannabis. This hasn't really existed before. Um, you know, the Farm Bill obviously has opened up a lot of uh, new research opportunities. And, uh, you know, FlorWorks, that's, that's, that's our mission is to, to validate uh, the, the benefits of, of minor cannabinoids. That's interesting. And so I know from personal experience and, you know, browsing on Google from, you know, what, what, what do I know? But uh, when, you're, when you're taking normal THC, um, yes, it'll help you go to sleep, but the sleep quality tends to decline a little bit. You don't get like vivid dreams, for example. Um, in your experience and what you know, how does your product, does it help with that? Does it help with your sleep quality as well as your dreams and that sort of stuff? Yeah, I, I find the CBN and and I take a 50 milligram dose and that's that's our optimal dose from our sleep study. Uh, it helps like with this overall restorative health. I mean, I sleep all night. I've got young kids, so I wake up in the middle of the night, and uh, you know, oftentimes, especially being uh, you know in, in charge of my department, I, I my mind starts racing. You know, I start thinking about all the things I got to do the next day. Um, what I noticed with CBN is it really helps to just relax my my mind at night, and I sleep very well. And I also uh, I, I dream normally as well. Um, there's definitely a lot of studies out there showing that THCV or THC, excuse me, uh, does interrupt the REM cycle. So um, while it helps uh, maybe sedate you and get you to sleep, um, it, it doesn't look like it's it's that beneficial for like a full night restorative sleep. Yeah, no, it's just like alcohol, you know, when you, if, you, if you drink alcohol, it kind of does a similar thing where it'll put you to sleep, but it doesn't necessarily improve the quality of the sleep. Um, yeah. Are there any major misconceptions that you find about CBN? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, you know, first, first off, it was like, you know, oh, I, I grow CBN plants. That it, it just doesn't exist. Like it's a, it has to degrade from THC. That's the only way to get to, to CBN. So, so that's one, there's no CBN rich strains. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I mean, I think that the, the psychotropic effects of CBN get uh, misconstrued a little bit. People say, Oh, it is psychoactive. Um, but you have to give context to these, to these types of conversations, right? Well, that means you have to study it. So, you know, what, what is the level that, that, that creates a psychotropic response? You know, we know it's not a hundred milligrams, but is it 400 milligrams? Is it a thousand milligrams? Um, so, you know, we've also uh, 
completed our oral toxicity studies. So uh, looking at the safety of, of a product and, and this is all, uh, this is very normal for food products is uh, you have to go through an oral tox study and, and understand, you know, what are the safe levels for consumption? Um, and so, so CBN is very safe. And it's also the, the first cannabinoid to ever be discovered too. Um, so we know it's been around a long time. Um, and then there's another group, um, you, you'll find him on LinkedIn, uh, Andrew Westerkamp, I think is his name, and uh, it's Smoke and All. And they take, they they grab smoke coming off of cannabis and that and create, it, it, they, they capture an extract out of that, that through the smoke. So, so there's all these cannabinoids that come from smoking uh, your, your, your cannabis that aren't just THC. So if you look at their data, uh, I think they, they state that like 20 to 25 percent of the THC in your flower converts to CBN as you're smoking that joint. I know, eh? that, that's yeah. fascinating. Really Super fascinating, fascinating work. Yeah, Smoke and All is the name of the company. Really, really enjoy their work and their data that they put out. Um, so that's another misconception just about cannabis in general. It's like if you're smoking a joint, you know, everybody chases numbers. We all know that they want 35 percent THC, but everything changes. The chemistry of the molecules change when you heat it and you apply oxygen. So you're actually getting, you know, what, what are you smoking? Uh, I'm also curious. Um, so we've been talking about the CDN for a little while now. Uh, what other products does FloraWorks offer or offerings in the market? So, yeah, we offer CBD, of course, uh, CBG, um, CBN, uh, THCV, which is a very interesting molecule. Um, it's kind of been dubbed the, the weederol or the Adderall or the diet um, weed. There's, there's, there's some data uh, that supports it uh, for, for metabolic purposes. Um, so, so that's a pretty interesting one. Um, CBC as well, uh, that's, that's kind of coming on in the last year. Um, so, so Wild, uh, they launched, I think, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, a one-to-one uh, CBC THC gummy. It's a sativa with their sativa blend. Um, it's an awesome daytime product. Um, CBC seems to help with mood regulation a little bit. So um, there's, there's, there's some interesting data around your anandamides, which is these like joy receptors in your body. Um, and I think, you know, people don't talk about this uh, maybe enough, but the reason we take THC is to change our mood. I feel like, you know, it's the, it's the lift up. So let's say to become euphoric. Um, and a lot of these minor cannabinoids really support that euphoric feeling. Um, so, you know, we really focus on supplying those minor cannabinoids, creating a better profile so that brands can create a better product uh, that sticks out on the dispensary shelves. You know, you go into a dispensary, there's, there's a thousand THC only products generally yeah. pretty much the same thing. You get different strains, which of course uh, add different, different effects. But, you know, we talk about edibles. I mean, most of them all look the same. So these minor cannabinoid ratios uh, can help target effects and create differentiation on the shelves. Yeah. That's interesting. So you, you just mentioned like, I don't know, 10 different cannabinoids. Um, a couple of them sounded interesting. For example, like the daytime one, the one that's good for daytime. What would you say is your favorite um, that you'd like to talk about a little bit more? Yeah, uh, I, I like CVG. You know, it's it's uh, you know it's a it is enzymatically produced. It's uh, it's, it's it's relatively inexpensive for brands to use. Um, you know, I use I don't know if you can see this, but this is Wild's Pear Gummy. Um, I like this a lot. It, it's a one to one CVG uh, THC. And there was a study that just came out about uh, the effects of CVG on um, uh, on mood and and. Uh, that is a double blind to placebo study as well um, that I actually just posted on LinkedIn. I think it was by um, Dr. Ethan Russo, who's done a ton of work. And um, I can't remember right now, but, um, <laughs> but spot. Super, interesting, yeah, super interesting stuff. So I, I think CBG uh, just has tons of tons of great benefits. Um, yeah, helps with appetite, helps with helps with mood, just generally makes you feel good. That's interesting. That's what I'll have to look into a little bit more. Cause you know, you know how it is. There's a hundred different cannabinoids and with this whole farm bill thing, they're just adding in all these new ones too. It's almost like they're creating them as we go to, you know, the Delta AIDS too. That's a big, big one. Um, and so a second ago, you were mentioning uh, products on the dispensary shelves. Uh, do you guys have products that you put on the dispensary shelves directly? 
we don't. Is that something you're looking to do in the future? No, nope. no, we're just a uh, we're just an ingredient supplier. All right, fair enough. Yeah, and so kind of boring, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was uh, I was on a a podcast recently um, with the uh, the CEO of Canon Monitor, or now is his name. And he was mentioning uh, one of the tips that he was giving to business owners and like uh, people in the cannabis industry is that hey, you should you could you should focus on selling one thing really well first before you jump into a hundred different other markets. And so I would imagine there's many dispensary owners that are like, well, we should probably just uh, get this THC sales out before we look into the CBN, CBG, and all that stuff. Maybe you're also thinking the same way. I don't know. Is that kind of your idea? Just to focus so, on get one thing right yeah. first. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I, I see this all the time in the cannabis industry. People, you know, overextend themselves. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot of shiny objects out there that, uh, you know, people feel like they need to chase. You know, we really focus on CBN and uh, getting through uh, in FDA filing to, to really protect the use of that <clears throat> cannabinoid um, and, and make it widely available. Uh, that, you know, the sleep study alone took us about two years or a little over. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a long process to, to normalize um, an ingredient that, that you, you, like a supplement that you see on the shelf, right? Like, you know, some people take ashwagandha or, you know, there's, uh, you know, obviously there's melatonin and these different, these different um, supplements, they go through rigorous, rigorous testing and uh, validation before consumers ever know about them in cannabis industries you know it's 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 in a world of its own it, it you know it started off as black market um obviously you know thousands of years of history of cannabis use but you know it's it's been uh prohibited so you know we, we're starting from this strange place where a lot of people love it a lot of people use it but we don't have the the research and the and and um, you know that the deeper understanding of of how these products or these molecules work, um, like some other normal I think not normal but you know your more mainstream ingredients. Yeah, and so you just started to go into a topic that I wanted to discuss a little bit more in depth. Um, the topic is compliance, and so obviously you know you're maybe hanging on a thread there with the farm bill. If they were to change that, it could heavily impact your business. And so I'm curious uh, how you kind of balance your innovation and all these great ideas and great products you have um, with future regulations and current compliance. What would you say? Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, you never know what's coming with cannabis too. That's the other. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> all, hey God, it's like, all right, we're going to make it. <laughs> yeah. There's a general sense of anxiety with always looming. Um, you know, we, we definitely keep our nose to the ground uh, on compliance. Uh, since we are hemp drive, but we sell to a lot of uh, adult use markets, uh, we, have to, we have to navigate regulations in different states or, or yeah. almost all recreational states. So it's a lot. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that there's, there's always solutions, too. Um, so, you know, we, we do our best to, to be ahead of it and, and, you know, get licenses. We hold licenses, hemp licenses in Oregon, Colorado, California, Michigan, and one other, I can't even remember. And then we have a couple of, uh, strategic partners that we work through too for compliance. So, uh, still a lot of, a lot of hoops to jump through, even though we're hemp. Um, but, uh, you know, again, it, it goes, it comes back to that scientific validation. And, you know, if we could say, you know, CBN works for sleep, it works for this and that, um, we know it's safe. Um, you know, we're going to file, you know, we're going to file some, uh, like an, like an NDI filing with the FDA to, to get approval for this so that we don't have to hide behind these curtains or like yeah. or deal with these like completely asinine state by state regulations that don't make sense or, or the regulators have really no idea what they're doing or how to how to deal with this, so they you know, have, you know see what sticks uh, by throwing it against the wall, and um, it, it creates a lot of chaos. So again, our, our mission is to normalize that. That's why we are just focused on CBN right now. Let's get that one done. Then we can talk about you know the next cannabinoid. 
Yeah, you know, what do I know? But I think you'll be fine. I think we'll all be fine in the cannabis industry. I think we're slowly but surely kind of going towards more full legalization. That's my personal prediction, but we'll see. Um, my take is the government doesn't want to lose those uh, tax dollars. That, right, those right, right. It's like, yeah, it's, it, it makes a lot of sense for them to legalize it as opposed to giving all that money to the black market and the cartels and that sort of stuff. But I don't know. Pretty They're, hard to put a $73 billion market back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, money rules today. <laughs> so you, you're a marketing guy. Uh, I also work in marketing. I have this marketing agency where we help like website, we help cannabis dispensaries build websites and establish their online presence. Um, and I'm curious on your end, um, in Floriworks's end, what your main marketing and prospecting strategies are. Yeah. So initially it was to prove that CBN had a lot of value to our customers. So I used sales data um, and proved out that CBN products sell really well. Uh, Turns out that you know, 35% of uh, cannabis consumers purchase with sleep as their main goal for their products. Oh, so, um, yeah, we knew that that CBN had the sleep story behind it already, uh, even before we validated it. And so we saw those products selling really well. And so um, when we launched, I think Kiva had the number one selling edible product in California, and it was the CBN product. So use that data, say, you know, Hey, you know, look at what these guys are doing. Look at, look at this company, look at what they're doing. Uh, so that, that was a great, uh, way to market because, uh, sales numbers just don't lie. Um, and, and if consumers are speaking with their dollars, um, that, that, that really is, is almost better than the science, uh, right. It's working for people to repurchasing then it's working. Yeah. Would you say that uh, partnerships, like you mentioned strategic partnerships a little while ago, would you say that that's also part of your strategy, getting your name out there? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, always looking at the, the movers and the shakers in the industry, you know, the biggest players, um, really focusing in on and adding value for them. And, uh, you know, for us, you know, it's all about innovation, right? Like, like all of the products that we offer pretty, uh, pretty nascent um, as of you know four years ago. So yeah. we need we need companies like like Wild to innovate and to bring this to a greater market to to show you know the value and the and the benefits of these products. Um, that's that's our best marketing. You know is, is you know partnering with those those types of companies. Yeah, definitely. I actually work with a business coach right now who had a lot of a lot of success um, in the legal realm of marketing. Um, his uh, Frankie fan, shout out Frankie, you're awesome. Um, his main strategy was this thing called the shoe stores where he wouldn't necessarily go after clients directly, the lawyers directly, but he would go after the people that they buy from. So we're, we're using the word strategic partnerships. He would use the word shoe stores, but it's, it's a really powerful strategy. Glad you're also getting in, into that. Uh, but getting back on track here, um, what kind of up, upcoming products or innovations are you guys looking at that you're excited about? <clears throat> Um, you know, like I said, I'm really excited about THCV. It's already, it's already on market, um, but not in a very big way. So I'm really excited about that product, seeing more of more, uh, blends as well. Um, I think that. Why are you excited about it? You said THCV. What's, what's exciting about that one? Um, yeah, it's just an interesting molecule. So it has some potentially some appetite suppressing qualities to it. So people who don't want to get the munchies or, um, need more of like an energetic boost to it. Um, a lot of people claim that it just really helps them stay alert and focused. So I think that's, that's really interesting. Um, because obviously, you know, THC can make you a little sleepy, make you a little cloudy at times. Um, and, and, you know, for me, I want the, I want the euphoric benefit without the cloudy headiness most of the time, because I'm a, I'm a dad. I, I you know, I, I can't just space out for, for three hours as much as I want to, um, you know, I guess they're pretty focused. So, uh, I still want the benefits of, of THC and, and the euphoric feelings and, and, you know, some of the, some of the gut health, but, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to, um, nod off, you know, in a, in a meeting or something. So, so some of the minor cannabinoids, I think are pretty interesting. Um, and then blending, uh, of different cannabinoids. So, um, you know, I found that THCV with CBC is awesome. Um, it's a really nice blend. Uh, and again, I, I, you know, I think um, uh, CBGs just got tons of potential. So, so those are the those are the big five right now. Um, 
we don't we don't really deal with any of the other psychoactive cannabinoids, uh, you know, Delta eight and all those. I, I you know, I'm, I'm a little agnostic about that. Um, but, uh, you know, mostly really curious about, you know, therapeutic benefits of, of some of these lesser known cannabinoids. Yeah, you know what's funny? Uh, I was on a call with a lawyer talking about the Delta 8s, the Delta 9s, and kind of the impacts of the farm bill. Um, you know that it's led to these things being brought abroad. And so I'm sure like your CBN, CBN, or like, for, for example, I live in Peru right now, and you can go to the store and buy those sorts of things over the counter, even though it's technically not legal. It's just so interesting um, how legal uh, trends in the United States can kind of just trickle down without ever, ever putting it on paper. You know, I just thought that's so interesting. Yeah, these cultural shifts um, are pretty, pretty hard to stop. I think. Yeah, no. Uh, so we're, we're, we're I've taken about thirty minutes of your time here. I definitely res respect your time. So just got like four questions. Uh, sure. What do you see for the future of FloraWorks and cannabinoids, uh, just like CBN, in the next five years? What, what's your What does your crystal ball say? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think that the hemp derived cannabinoids. Uh, not as much Delta-8, but I think hemp-derived Delta-9 is going to be the big story of this year. You know, we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of big cannabis companies jumping into that as well so that they're hedging their bet. Um, and it's it's become, it's not federally legal, but I, I, I think that there's this national legalization with uh, the balance of adult use recreational markets and hemp-derived uh, THC markets. So you can get you can get cannabis pretty much anywhere in the United States now, any any state. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's the big story right now, um, and I, I I don't think that's going to be shut down. I'm I'm, I'm optimistic like you. I don't I don't think regulators are going to come just wipe that clean. I think what we're going to see is uh, low dose, so two to five milligrams staying legal for hemp derived THC. Um, which you know is, is generally good enough for the mass market, and then um, you know we're real bullish on on minor cannabinoids. Obviously, it's our business, so you know we we didn't believe it. We'd be crazy to keep doing it. So uh, you know we think that there's going to be uh, a lot more targeted effects, like I've talked about. I, you know, I, I'm I, I'm like a, a broken record when it comes to this, but you know who wants just a THC product when you can have like a, you know, hey, this is your happy. THC that's going to last for this long and make you feel this good or, or, you know, Hey, you want to sleep? This is the product for you. Um, we've specially formulated it so that it works great for sleep. We know it, it's been studied. Um, you know, I, I think that's the future. So, um, yeah, I mean, a true CBN, I think is kind of leading the way there and uh, we'll see a lot more of that in the next five years. Yeah. Awesome. Completely with you. Uh, this might be a cookie for you. This might just be speaking to, Speaking to preaching to the choir, I was just on a call about <clears throat> like four months ago with uh, Joseph Friedman, who's a medical pharmacologist. He's, he loves all these cannabinoids, excuse me. <clears throat> and he's creating what's called a periodic table of these different uh, molecules, cannabis molecules. And so that might be something for you to kind of look into while you're uh, planning out products. I don't know. Or maybe it's some of you guys are five steps ahead of me. Um, I don't know. Um, and so next up is you, you're a here. You've been here in this cannabis industry for, you said, 10 years. And so uh, that's not really easy to do. Um, most people that I know who are in the industry go in and out within like three, four years. And so this business, for example, we're about to go one year. And so myself personally, I'll be at like almost two years. Or actually, I'm at two years now. And so, you know, we're, we're still kind of starting out, as you might say. Um, and so to people like myself and uh, people coming into the industry, what kind of advice would you give to new entrepreneurs in the cannabis industry? Yeah, yeah. Uh... For sure. I, I think, you know, you just got to, you got to manage your expectations. Uh, I think when we all jumped in, we thought we were going to get rich quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of people did, uh, you know, it's a grind. So, you know, I, I think you gotta, you gotta be uh, tough in this industry, but you gotta be supple too. Um, you gotta be really flexible. Um, I'm a martial artist. I, I trained most of my life. It's very similar. You get beat up a lot. You gotta, you gotta, always stay on your feet, stay on your toes. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think the most important thing is you, you really got to enjoy it. You got to love it. Um, but it was, it was a saying we had in martial arts. You got to love it. Cause you're, you're getting punched in the face. You know, it's, it's not always pleasant. 
but the 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 process the whole entire process is wonderful and i think cannabis you know we're we're really in a revolution i mean when i was in high school uh in in 1999 i mean imagining that i was going to be selling cannabis legally being successful uh doing this and and really you know changing the way that that people use uh the, or or change medications or 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 change their health based on these products that were totally illegal uh 20 years ago it, it's awesome you know so you got to just stay inspired by by where you're going and then um you know i want to i want a better future for my kids i want i want better healthcare products available i want more natural healthcare products available for them and and less stigma around this stuff too so I think, uh, you know, if you just got to stay motivated and, and I don't know that it's, uh, it's particular to cannabis either. Cannabis is just super fast paced, but anything you do, you know, I think the same things pretty much apply. Yeah. But great advice. Uh, thank you for that. And also congrats again on making it 10 years. It's a long time. Thanks. Um, and then kind of to wrap up, I have a, a few fun questions for you. Um, and so if you don't want to answer any of these, it's completely understand. Just let me know. But, um, Tell me about the first time you tried cannabis. Yeah, so I grew up in Ashland, Oregon. A um, lot of a lot of weed around, and I think I was in. Uh, my sister, older sister, had you know friends over and smoked a joint, and I, was, I think I was fourteen at the time. Um, and I, you know, I, I think I used to deal with a lot more anxiety than I do now, and I and I noticed the effect it had on my body and just relaxing me. Um, and I started using regularly at the age of 17 and, um, it really, it really changed my life in a lot of ways, uh, opened up a whole new paradigm to me. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's, uh, everybody has a different experience with it, but, um, for me, it's, it's, it's always been, um, very positive and, uh, just just help me you know really reduce my anxiety and stress awesome and what kind of uh outside of that what other effects did you get on the first time uh oh just you know the happiest hi i think you know i, I think i remember staring at a uh, just like a happy face you know those yellow happy faces and just laughing hysterically you know it's like <laughs> that's a good story um, and these days, is so uh, I, would, I would imagine maybe you're a little bit more refined as I am. I don't really like getting high that much anymore. If I do, just smaller doses. Uh, well, what's your favorite cannabis product? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's some there's some great ones out there. I I have these drops here, um, which are made by Quick Liquids, uh, and I'm in a very fortunate place. I get to send him uh, a bunch of minor cannabinoids and say, "Hey, mix up this this you know different blend for me." And he sends it back, but I've got, I've got like five different kinds of these and I can just drop these into water or into juice or make a mocktail. And so I can be like, Oh, I want some CBG. I want this much milligrams of THC. I want five milligrams of CBG. And, and, you know, I just mix up a cocktail. And to me, that's, that's super cool. Um, again, I'm just, in a, I'm in a lucky position, but um, connoisseurs like, this is, this is the way to go, especially as you, as you get older. And like you said, I, I don't get super high anymore. So I want to, I want to dial it in perfectly. So, yeah. yeah you're awesome. like the, the modern, uh, what's the guy from breaking, but Heisenberg, you got like all your different old tinctures and all that stuff. <laughs> I like to think I'm like the Oompa Loompa in uh, the, the, the new uh, Wonka movie. You know, he makes it, he's got his little cocktail <laughs> set up in the back of his trunk. <laughs> funny funny yeah one more question I, I definitely appreciate your time respect your time thanks for being on the show um sure. but last question for you uh we kind of touched upon this a little bit but i want to kind of touch upon the broader recreational cannabis market uh what does your crystal ball say in the next five to ten years where, where are we heading oh uh, i think we covered this already yeah, yeah like we were talking well at least in my case we're kind of talking about the cbd cannabinoids and so would you say it's the same thing where going towards legalization slowly but surely uh yeah sure i mean i think that we're gonna uh i don't think we're gonna see federal legal legalization in the next five years um i, I think we're gonna stay state by state um yeah strangely i think that the the more the blue states the democratic states are going to be uh probably just adult use and they're going to 
probably put more heavy restrictions on hemp derived cannabinoids. And then your like red states uh, generally are going to lean towards less adult use and more hemp. So it's kind of this like uh, libertarian approach to cannabinoids in a lot of states. And then, you know, I, I think that um, I think that we will see schedule three come out though. And that's going to be the big, you know, game changer and we'll see what happens. You know, I, I think a lot of people are pretty pessimistic about that. Uh, as a research organization, we're very optimistic about what that's going to do. Um, but uh, yeah, I do see the potential, you know, downside of that as well. So it'll be interesting. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a little while until there's cohesion. Um, but that's, again, just in general, uh, not a lot of cohesion right now in, in politics. So, um, you know, people will not stop using cannabis. So, yeah, yeah. So it'll be try, and regulate it, try and do this and that. Good luck. You know, people are going to find a way. Yeah, definitely. Well, definitely appreciate your time, Micah. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for all the insights. Um, and once again, uh, it's Flora Works um, and True CBN. Do you have a last minute pitch that you'd like to, you want to get the last word? Um, no, just, you know, really recommend, uh, you know, branching out if you're a consumer out there, you know, branch out, try some new, new products with minor cannabinoids. Um, and uh, other than that, just uh, be kind to your neighbor. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Mike. I definitely wish you the best. Uh, we'll, be, we'll stay connected. Um, and looking forward to hearing more from you. I appreciate you having me on.